All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of At the Table by Urban Forex. Uh, I have we I have here with me on the panel here Armo tuning in from Hello. Bangkok. Hello. All right. We also have Lucas all the way from Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. Hey guys, how's it going? And uh, Ian all the way from uh, where in Australia is it? The Melbourne. Sunshine Coast Australia. Sunshine Coast Australia. There you go. There you go. All right, <laughs> hey everybody. Brisbane, right? Or is that the airport? Uh, uh, north, north of Brisbane, yeah. North of Brisbane. Pretty close. Oh. Okay. That, that word is always, uh, it's, it's hard to yeah. <laughs> But yeah. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, today, we have a fun topic. We got a lot of people tuning in live. So those of you guys who are tuning in uh, from your Spotify's or Google Play's or anything like that, just to let you guys know that right after we do these uh, live podcasts, uh, which are recorded and you're listening to them, we also do a webinar following up on this topic where I go onto the screen and I display certain things that we talked about. Um, so if you want more information or want to see the webinar that was followed by this podcast, the link will be below the podcast. All right, guys. So today we have a topic about uh, indicators. Actually, this topic was brought to us by uh, one of the students saying, uh, I know in the past, Naveen, you have mentioned that uh, indicators are bad and indicators won't help you, but are there any indicators that are good? And more importantly, sometimes when I see your screen, I do see some indicators on there. So what's the significance of that? Why are you using them? Right? So let's talk about indicators today. What are indicators? How important are they to your trading success? And what indicators are actually effective or is there even any strategies that you can you can use around a particular indicator to see if you can make some profitable trades? So, Armo, let's start off with you and let's find out uh, what you have to say about this. Well, indicators, um, it's, it's something in my journey that I kind of skipped because I was immediately with uh, with Urban Forex. But <clears throat> I do know a lot of people are really attracted to indicators. And I suppose what attracts people to it is that it's an indication or well, an indicator is an indication of when to take a trading action. So it's, it's almost like a shortcut or maybe it is like a shortcut. And yeah, I, I understand why people are attracted to it, but I, I know from firsthand experience or, you know, from, I still saw indicators on the charts that that's not the entire story. You cannot just, look at an indicator and think okay that's my entry or that's my exit or that is the trend i want to trade because what does an indicator say about that trend you still have to do uh, the research you have to put in the legwork and uh, to do the analysis right and then then right. you can maybe use an indicator right so yeah that's that's my short summary of how i see indicators Okay. Okay. I Lucas, think... what has been your experience with indicators and do you have a favorite one that uh, you used to like, perhaps, let's say, um, or one that you actually felt like, oh yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I think I've tried multiple indicators before, but to just piggyback on what Omo was just saying, um, you know, he was saying that um, it's an indication to do something on the charts. I think I'm well, speaking from my own personal experience, when everyone starts off, trading, at least for me, it's really hard to define what actually looks good, what you actually want to do on the charts. So mm -hmm. having an indicator to, you know, indicate or, you know, guide you towards a certain action um, makes a lot of sense for someone who's new coming into the markets. For me, I think in the beginning, I've tried Fibonacci. Um, yeah, that was pretty interesting because it's a lot of mumbo jumbo behind it. You know, some traders swear by it. Some traders, you know, say it's shit. But um, yeah, it's, that's something I used before. ATRs, volumes, all kind of stuff. You gotta be careful, man. Yeah, they're Fibonacci. People <laughs> throw eggs on you, man. You gotta be careful. <laughs> you, you just you just offended a cult. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say it's not good. I said yeah. I've tried it before. So yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Ian, what's what's your experience been and uh, what do you like uh, uh, in terms of indicators? In fact, do you have a positive side of indicators that you can shed light on? Are they actually even useful? Yeah, I think they can 
it can be useful. I mean, I, I don't want to just, you know, say the same thing over and over again in the right context. They, they're definitely useful. And uh, I think similar to Lucas, I started out on the, on the indicator front. End. And, and that is actually a good thing because in some ways that it, it got me into it, if you know what I mean, like it made something that is uh, maybe perceived to be overly complex or maybe a bit confusing to begin with. Um, yeah. I don't mean to make it say it dumbs it down, but it just, it simplifies it enough that like, hey, I can do this. You know, I had, yeah. you know, plenty of winning trades when I first started just using indicators. It just, uh, yeah. I found my consistency wasn't, you know, where it was, uh, what where it needed to be using right. indicators. That's why I steered away, I, I guess, eventually. So, okay. So from, from the sounds of it, all of you guys are, are basically saying that's where your journey began. Um, so let me talk about that. Like if that's where the journey began, should a new person, well, and, and the opposite side of it, you're saying that's where the journey began, but that's not where you are anymore. So you're no longer perhaps using indicators. Anyone using indicators anymore? Any of you guys? Yes. Oh, if volume is considered indicator. Volume, yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. Okay, volume, so probably MAs. not in the, sorry? Volumes, MAs, ATR. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So probably just, not in the sense of how you used to use them for entries and no, exits and all that. I think it's not the focal point of how we trade anymore. I think is more what it is. They're there and they're there to be used in circuits, but we just, they're not the main focus. Anymore. Okay. So, so actually that's a very interesting. So let's talk about how effective are indicators for, for example, a new person coming into the industry, you know, should they use indicator trading strategies? Will that work for them? Or, should they avoid it altogether or are they doomed and they have to go down that route? I, I think Ian brought so something really interesting up there where, where he said, well, you, you come into the market and what you see on the screen might be very confusing or, you know, at least not, not clear on when you have to do something with it. Uh, so when do you have to trade and indicators can be a nice entry point into discovering um how the market operates but it's it's only an initial stepping stone i'd say so it, i think it's a good question to ask whether it it's necessary for a beginner or not because it's it's just part of the journey and it's it yeah i don't know if it's a necessity in the journey i'm not sure as well but based on what ian was saying um, someone who starts off using indicators, you know, they may try things here and there. And then if let's say they find that things are not consistent, you know, if they're able to take it one more step further and think about why things aren't consistent, then the next journey begins. But if, right. the, if, if that person, let's say, just stops there and say, mm -hmm. oh no, this indicator doesn't work. Let me just move on to another indicator. Um, then, you know, it's going to be, they're going to be going in circles for quite yeah. some time absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely i think i think the best example that i can give around uh this is indicators are like a bully you can get rid of the bully and be like all right no big deal or you can experience having that bully standing up to that bully and then saying i am now stronger because of the presence of the bully was there. You know what I mean? It's it's sort of like you learn to be better because he was there. So you're look you're finding a good positive light from the darkness kind of thing. So it's not necessarily a hundred percent bad bad thing. I don't know. What do you guys have to say about that? Would you guys agree with something like that? So like all the MAs, hundred hundred MAs, fifty MAs, twenty MAs, all pointing down. Stand up to the bully and then just. <laughs> 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 I think you misread the analogy. You need a better indicator for that analogy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, it, it's like it's like how how we need bacteria to learn how to fight it, kind of thing, rather than get rid of all sort of bacteria and make sure that yeah. uh, we never deal with it ever again. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things. It's like you you need it to be better. So let's talk about needing an indicator. What indicators have made you better? in your journey? What indicators were so effective initially, it was so profitable that using that indicator and you were like, I think I can build a career off of this. This is a wonderful guide for me to just step in and lift off from here. What indicators did you actually like? For me, I, 
I remember, <clears throat> I think the first one that really worked for me was just the simple moving average crossover. I, I think I it was one of the first ones I traded where, you know, you wait for the moving average to either cross above or below. Yeah. Um, and, and it worked really well in the right market. Like I didn't know the different market states or anything like that at point in time, but like, you know, when a market was hardcore trending down or up, you know, it worked really well. And I had uh, a lot of consistent wins in a row. Yeah. But as soon as that, that trend at the time I turned around or started to slow down, then all of a sudden, you know, that's where the consistency went out the window. So uh, it was a simple, easy one to use, but again, at the time, I didn't know that had to also be used in a, in the right perspective. So. Yeah. I, th I, think first... I think we've all used moving average crossovers at one point. Would you guys say so? Yeah. And all of you guys in the room here who are listening in live, have you guys used moving average crossovers as a sort of a trading technique? Yeah. Okay. Tons of yeses coming out. Yeah. What about you guys here on the, on the panel? Have the rest of you guys used it? Uh, Lucas and Armo? Yeah. Yeah. Even I did. Yeah. It's, it seems like it's a nice way to get started with the market and saying, all right, that, that sounds about right. You know, yes. uh, if it crosses over, I'll do a buy. But at no point did we all stop and question ourselves like, really, is it that easy to make money? No, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it sounds, it sounds so logical. Like if the yeah. moving averages crossover means, you know, it's turning around or if the RSI is oversold or overbought means and the charts is over seems like it's overbought then you know it's going to go down seems so logical on the surface that sometimes it's difficult to just question it if it continues to make money yeah let, let, okay so let's let's take it further and saying through your evolutions you go through that moving average crossovers have we used have any of you guys used macd macd yeah right yeah, yeah. divergence yeah so. moving average conversion divergence there's that one have you guys used RSI, relative strength index? Yeah. Pivot points. Yeah. Pivot points was big for us. It was huge. Yeah. Pro trading strategy at Urban Forex. Pivot points. Yeah. We dominated that industry for a long, long time when, when it comes to pivot points. And then Fibonacci comes along. And I, I went deep in Fibonacci. I went hardcore to a point where as I started studying Fibonacci, and then I started looking at it like, it's on pineapples. It's in the universe. It's on the cone. And then I'm like, well, then it's in my markets. I just can't bloody pinpoint it. <laughs> so, but it was a wonderful journey. I absolutely loved it. It's like, oh, look at the accuracy of that 50% pullback. 61.8. Was it 61.8? Yeah. 61.8. Yeah, and then 38.6. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. I, I thought... Fibonacci, that mathematician, is the golden key. How many of you guys have felt that, that before? Yeah, for sure. And I think that's that's how many indicators actually um, operate or work for us, where they work very often, like pinpoint, like whether it's that crossover moving average or divergence or Fibonacci or any, any of those things. Right. They work like pinpoint, but then sometimes they don't work or they stop working for a while and then it's like you've just given the co the golden key back and now you're there with no skills that you learned from any of that because yeah. you're relying on that indicator and you're like okay so i i wait until it works again and how long do i have to wait and when can i trust it so yeah it's, it's, it's uncomfortable to put your your faith so to speak in uh in indicators in an indicator yeah and that's absolutely true right it's not just the fibonacci it's in my personal journey also any indicator i use i felt that's the one that's the one it's, it's like finding a girl and then you're like oh she's the one and then you're like three months later like no she's definitely not the one i'd like to see how this analogy works when we start talking about using multiple indicators at the same time <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's never that's never the answer <laughs> like, things get, get a lot of trouble like that right? <laughs> <laughs> but Okay, what, what, one of the guys in it in the chat room here, um, let me get the name right. 
Harvey in in the live chat is actually saying Bollinger Bands. Like, what about Bollinger Bands? Have you guys used Bollinger Bands? I haven't. No. Used them. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Also, it's a it's a it's a way to understand if things are going out of balance and they bring it back to balance. It's basically, if you want to put it in a nutshell, without going into all of the standard deviations and all that stuff. Of course, by me even using that word, many people are like, oh, university, close that, close this podcast. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't want to hear those words. Huh? This uh, reminds me of calculus, like, no way I'm listening to that. <laughs> but to keep it simplified, it's a band that looks like a sandwich, right? Where there is the upper bun, the lower bun, and then the lettuce in between. So that's all it is. And then prices, as they go up to the upper bands, prices come back to normal. If they go down to the lower bands, prices come back to normal. So it's sort of like a thing saying, you're too far out, get back to normal. You're too far out, get back to normal. That actually gave me one of my edges where I trade parabolic moves. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Through the use of Bollinger Bands time and time and time again. Now I don't use them. I, I don't even look at them. But it gave me an edge, an extra edge that I use in my you know, everyday trading when I, when I do parabolic mean reversals. Okay, you know, one of those edges that, you know, I, I, you guys know about this, uh, Ian and Lucas at the prop firm, when we do these parabolic moves, what, what are we actually doing? We're bringing price back to normal. And there's a certain way we trade those. And so I learned that from trading Bollinger Bands over and over again until some golden key came out of it for me. And then I'm like, all right, well, time to move on from Bollinger Bands. But it was very useful for me. So again, you know, it's not all bad, right? Indicators. No, I think for market observation, they can actually be really useful. Yeah, Correct. especially to, especially till your eye like has, has viewed the charts long enough that because over time, even just without the indicators, you can just okay, that thing's outside the Bollinger Bands, you know, you don't need the actual Bollinger Band on there anymore. But mm -hmm. to begin with, it, it's really helpful, right? Just to kind of give you that perspective, you know, till your eye just naturally sees it without the indicator on there. So correct, correct. Now, let, let me ask all of you guys this one thing. Forget the indicators, let's say you're coming onto a chart, right? You, you come onto your computer screen, and you're looking at a chart. And there is a movement that goes up 100 pips. Right? When the green candles that you see that are going up 100 pips, how many of you guys have ever done this in the past where you're like, imagine I bought at the bottom, and I closed at the top, that 100 pips would have made a lot of money. Right? We've all done this in the past, right? At least a billion times a day. We've all yeah, done this every time. Yeah. every day. <laughs> <laughs> so since we've all done that now, but here's the interesting part, though, an indicator cannot tell you that in advance it can only tell you that after the fact so then our dream that we're looking to oh i wish i bought it from the bottom and sold it at the top an indicator can never get you that information which is kind of weird which is kind of weird so it we come to a realization much later into our careers of like the indicator cannot tell us the future. You know, I, I see Siva uh, saying this in the live chat, indicator shows the past, I can't see the future. That's very, very true. That's very, very true. And it's very important to really take that in and understand that logic, that an indicator cannot show the past. Another one from Leroy, he's saying is news also an indicator. Now, have you guys seen news channels where there's a word on the top that has L I V E? Not live live. Yeah. Right? What is news? A news is genetically, not genetically, a news is technically reporting the past. You cannot report anything live. The moment you have to process it, the reporter has to process it, speak it out of his mouth, it is already the past. The moment it reaches your ears, it is the past. You can only report the past. You can't report the future. Okay. Yeah. An indicator is the same thing. It can only talk about the past. So our whole point is, well, then do I need the past to understand the future? Now, it's like our indicators philosophical. <laughs> it's like, is that what's going on? Are, is, are indicators telling us the meaning of life? <laughs> the more and more, the more and more this conversation continues, it feels like it's, we're sort of writing a plot for a movie. 
<laughs> it's like indicators of forex coming to your home screen soon <laughs> it's the past what you need to know what the future comes <laughs> yeah oh that's a very good one casey is saying what about the weatherman yeah that's very interesting a weatherman is the only person that is using the indicators to actually predict the future that's a very good analogy, actually. A weatherman is the only indicator that we like to use. However, when I say the word weatherman, it's also a dark spot for many people because when they listen to it, I'm sure anyone tuning into this podcast is probably swearing at their weatherman saying, my weatherman is horrible. <laughs> he can never predict rain or sunshine. I live in London. They can never predict when it's going to happen. <laughs> like. So some people really hate their weatherman in their own cities and they're like, no, my weatherman is horrible. He's not good. But now if you, you know, many places they'll go down to, it's going to rain down to the minute. Some weather, some weather stuff is actually very, very good. They can actually predict it to a certain level of accuracy like that. So there, there it goes. Like not all indicators are bad. Can you use indicators to sort of predict the future? How about that? What do you guys have to say about that? Well, to an extent, there like you can forecast, which is the same what the weatherman does. You can forecast, okay. But isn't trading all trading forecasting technically? Yeah. You're With trying to position yourself, right? Yeah. With a risk assessment, and you know you do the whole analysis. Absolutely, absolutely. So then, fast forward down later into the journeys. We got indicators on top of indicators on top of indicators to filter and extra filter and extra filter it out to make sure there must be one golden combination. There must be a setting I'm not using right. I should be using 30 moving average, not 29. Ah, you know. Like, and it might work once. <laughs> yeah. If, if, I, if I show you guys a, uh, I don't have it right now, but if I would have sh shown you guys a picture of my basement where I was living in when I first started trading, I have papers and papers and papers all across my rooms, like a mad scientist going through, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use an indicator and I'm going to use this indicator to filter it. And I'm going to do it only between this time of the day, scratch, throw it away. That doesn't work. Okay. I'm going to do it all day long, but I'm going to filter it with the MACD. That doesn't work. I'm going to do this and this. And then I sometimes I see something actually works and I'm running around the rooms like there. I did this somewhere. Where is it? I'm looking <laughs> for that paper. Like, I'm sure I, I, I made a strategy around this. Where is it? It just goes on and on. It's an endless loop. It's an endless loop. I got stuck in that cycle for like a couple of years. A couple of years. How long, how long were you guys stuck in uh, the indicator rat race? Well, luckily for me, not too long, because shortly after that, um, I came on board with Urban Forex and started to learn from there. Okay, so you went straight to price action uh, after that? Okay, uh, yeah. some of the guys yeah. in the chat are saying, uh, Alberto is saying three years. Uh, Caval is saying long, long time. Okay, uh, Ian, what were you saying? Yeah, I was probably <clears throat> a year or so at least. I remember spending weekends just back testing on on software like you'd find this strategy you back test all weekend long you're like oh i found it and then it you know like you say it works for a while and then it doesn't so then you get discouraged and you go at it again yeah um, back testing so yeah and then and then and then the next piece happened you remove all the indicators you're like all right i'm clutter free i'm just gonna read prices and then when you're looking at the chart like hmm this candlestick must be a pattern. Maybe it tells me something. Then your, your candlestick charts become an indicator technically. You're like, all right, I'm not using an indicator technically, but it's, it is an indicator, the candlestick pattern. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it, becomes, it, it becomes a fun game that where you evolve, but it's a fascinating journey. And I think it's this journey. I personally believe if there's someone new starting off, go through it, experience it, if you're looking to avoid it, at least you should experience how an indicator works, yeah. at least to a certain extent. You should know how you feel around it. You should get an idea of, I bought because my indicator said, said to buy, but then I bought very late. As soon as I bought, markets went against me. Why is that happening? Why is that happening time and time again? What does that even mean? 
that sort of experience is uh, something. It's like it's indicators, like the little mini teacher of, that can teach you a lesson. Part of the journey, I think you learn from your mistakes more so than you learn from you know, yeah. good things. Yeah, so. I think I think it's it's good where you know the the trader would be able to understand what the majority are doing at certain point in time on the charts. So once they are able, they are able to learn what the majority are doing and if you know the majority are wrong footed at one point, they can take advantage of that on the other side. So yeah. Yeah. Well I, I, I see that sense. I see I see Roshan in the chat typing indicators are a lazy man's tools, period. Well <laughs> it's like that sums it up. And if that's the case, man, I was lazy for like two plus years nonstop. <laughs> it was like it was a very, very tough journey. And yeah, and that is a sum up of indicators in, in one sentence. So, you know, it's nicely said, Roshan, that uh it does happen that way and we don't realize it until either someone tells us or we come to an own own realization that what am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? We're just going in circles. But it's completely understandable that it's attractive to people because, you know, why would you put in the work if you don't have to? That's that would be stupid. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, isn't, isn't don't we do that with family as well? If we did so much hard work to, let's say, build an empire, make some money, and then your child grows up and he's like, I want to go out with my friends. I want to travel. You wouldn't say, no, go make your own money and then travel like you'd be like, OK, do it, because I don't want you to struggle and suffer the way I did to get to this point. You know, so it's understandable that if there is a shortcut, why not? You know, it's not wrong. Like, it's understandable why people are attracted to it. Um, so it's only natural. Yeah. So having that said, having that said, shall we move this into a webinar and talk about what indicators do I currently use? Um, and the same things that I currently use are the same ones used by uh, Lucas and Ian also in the prop firm. How we use it, why is it useful, and uh, at to what extent is it used? Is it used to make an entry? Is it used to make an exit? Or is it used to just understand the markets? I can go over that all, all in the upcoming webinar. So we're going to end the podcast part right here. For those of you who are listening to the podcast, again, the link to the webinar will be below this video. Those of you guys who are here live and listening in, um, you can just stay on board. We're going to switch over from a podcast directly into a webinar where I will share my screen and we'll go deeper into. All right, let's take a look at a deeper look at indicators. All right, guys, thank you so much for you guys here on the panel. Armo, Lucas and Ian, it's always a pleasure to have you guys uh, speak to you guys in a little bit. Cool. Enjoy, everyone. Enjoy. Enjoy. Cheers.